Hey guys, at the weekend I managed to clear gear raid to 20 free stars so I can auto it now. So I'm pretty chuffed with that and I wanted to show you how I did it in case it helps some of you out in future. And if you look on my server, lineups that cleared the stage, you can see there's about three of us have managed to complete it so far. And you can see I'm using a pretty strange team. Just to quickly go over why I have each of these heroes and then I'll show you the actual video. Dalin is of course here because of her cost benefits. Her passive rebel allows her to generate cost every X amount of seconds. It's really good for getting heroes out it fast this is especially crucial for my timing because i rely on gwendolyn to survive the boss's shriek attacks her massive icy shell shield is what keeps everyone alive however she will cast this on the last person placed or the hero with the lowest hp usually the boss's shriek comes when there aren't many attacks coming down so everyone is full hp and i really want her to cast it on herself that way the shield applies to all adjacent allies and I can keep them all alive so my team is actually very tiny I run with a core of four heroes rather than eight I can't keep everyone alive with the shield so I run with four heroes and everyone else interchanges but I need her in the middle it could work with, with Elowin down last instead of Gwendolyn but this is the one that I found working best but what, the way this works is I rely on Dalin very early to get me the cost points necessary to place five heroes with Gwendolyn coming down last not including Dalin so six heroes in total before the first shriek and there's a couple of tricks I'm doing to achieve that and one of those little tricks if I show you very quickly my gearing my Gwendolyn is using spirit horn which is up upgraded once I don't think it needs to be I think even just base level will work granting her initial rage of plus 30 percent which means her ultimate is immediately ready when deployed so I don't need to place her early for her ult to come up I can place her and then ult immediately so there's a bit more nuance to it than that, but I'm just going to go over my heroes quickly and then I'll explain the rest over the video. So if we go back here. So Dallin is there to get my cost points up basically just at the start for Gwendolyn to, so I can have five heroes down and Gwendolyn being the fifth, so she always shields herself. Then I have Dagna just for the Lord benefit. The North Faction Lord benefits are pretty good, granting shield, granting stats. Most importantly, I want more stats for my Gwendolyn to make her shield bigger, to make her easier to survive, and it also helps with Olag. The next hero I'll go over, I use him because he creates a massive shield, 85% max HP. It makes it very easy for him to survive. He barely needs any additional shielding and then he's good to go. He can survive most shrieks and most of the ground pounds or whatever they're called quite easily. And this is also really good. And then Awakening 5, he also grants 20% physical damage reduction to adjacent allies. So really, really good. I would say he's probably the best tank for this mission, the best defender, just through his self-shield being so darn high and through his ability to reduce physical damage and also provide physical damage reduction to allies which will help with some of the shatter phases. Regulus I take because his ultimate allows him to share damage from allies. This makes it a lot easier to survive the shattering effect after the Shriek. The second part I find this a lot harder to deal with and Awakened Free Gwendolyn can handle the Shriek quite, quite well by herself if you've got the timings right but the massive radiating damage that comes out from the ground pounds, the shatters it's just so hard to handle so this is really helpful for that sharing damage from everyone around him helps keep my Elowin and Gwendolyn alive so really valuable there and he also has his Lionheart passive if things go bad he can survive for up to 10 seconds once per battle so that can help just hold the line a bit I did have a lot of trouble with this though because Regulus doesn't have any self shielding he's going to take 90 he's going to take 200% of his max HP as damage from Shriek, Shriek which means Gwendolyn shield 90% of her max HP needs to be more than 100% of Regulus's HP, which is why mine is missing a chess piece, why he's not got max gear, and why most of his gear is actually flat defense and kind of just messy. I'm very heavily using the Guardian set for the damage reduction, but yeah, it, it was quite tough to keep Regulus alive through Shrieks because if it was just a bit too much HP, then the Shriek would kill him. Olag just does not care, and he's even still 5-star. His self-shielding along with Elowin's shield means that he's just fine throughout. So those are the two defenders I use. Volker is being used entirely for her first awakening, which you get from Tide 105, reducing revive time by 25% for allies. Really, really good for gear raid too. And then from the top row, we have Elowin. I need her for, well, just healing and keeping everyone alive. She is also using the Guardian set, as you can see. I don't have her max skilled, so maxing her ult would probably help a lot. I probably could gear her a lot better. I haven't really spent any effort on her recently, which I probably should fix. But she does a pretty good job as she is. Salazar is down because he's just really, really good at burst damage. He can help a lot at the start by himself with an Elowin healing. He can handle the first wave of enemies. And then he can survive a little bit longer. But my strategy had changed a bit. and My strategy evolved a bit and I got rid of holding on to Salazar. I used him for the first two, despawned him and brought him back in the future for other parts. But he is especially good for deleting the boss at the very end. It gets rid of him super quickly. 
Abomination I use because he has such crazy HP, his base health is very high, and I have him pretty well geared, so I thought he would be a very good person to bring along, but also he has this passive ultimate torment, his HP locks for 4 seconds when falling below 50% HP, this doesn't stop him from getting one shot so it was a bit tricky sometimes, but generally it was quite nice for him to absorb a bunch of the rolling boulder hits without dying if it was timed right, so he was quite nice just for having a tanky fighter that can deal some damage, but he's mainly fodder to be honest salazar and abomination and dalin kind of just became fodder in the later waves to kind of absorb some of the rolling hits to keep my defenders alive and the real hero of this team was vienna may surprise you she is just ridiculously powerful her ultimate reaper's grasp just culls the entire wave just instantly murders everything in its path so i my strategy kind of revolved around shield walling blocking the waves until they hit and then when there's no shriek and there's no the ground pound shatter effect going on, drop Vienna, a few seconds later, she reapers grasps, calls the entire group of enemies, sometimes six to eight enemies, and then I immediately despawn her so I can do it again the next time. So it's a bit of a funny run, but this is a strategy that worked for me. I went with a very minimal team down permanently, two defenders, two healers, and that was my standard thing. And then I kind of swapped between different fighters and then eventually Vienna occasionally to help clean up the enemy waves. So... With that, I will go over the video now, and at the end, I'll show you the heroes that I used. So here is my pre-recording. I have it in a video editor, so I can skip over it. Okay, so you can see my team is as I just explained. And we start things off by immediately placing Dallin down. She's facing in, but honestly, she could be facing backwards or going off and having a picnic. She's just there for her passive. I have not built her to do any damage. Salazar goes down next, so I can deal with these two first enemies that come up. These choppers do immense damage, so he does need help. I tried this with Raph, but Raph just got slaughtered, so Salazar was the one that worked for me. So massive damage coming out, but Elowin is able to top him up. Then I put down my Regulus, and if you're watching my cost, I still have to place down Oleg, and I still have to place down Gwendolyn, and I need to Gwendolyn ult before the boss does his Shriek, which he will do immediately. I save Salazar's ult for the second wave. The boss comes out. I have Olag down. I don't have Gwendolyn down. The boss is going to ult any second now. However, you see this little golden glow above Dalin? That's me gaining a whole bunch of cost. And now Elowin is available. The boss is going to ult. Elowin goes down. You see this marker from her artifact giving her initial rage. So her ult is fully ready. But there's one more nuance that I have to wait for. A 90% shield of Elowin's max HP leaves her with an effective health of 190%. The boss's shriek does 200%. Elowin still dies. So she needs to shield herself first as well. So you see that little white bar? That's her immediately shielding herself on spawn. If I ult immediately, then she won't shield herself with her basic attack. And then she'll die. So you have to wait a little bit. And then this is enough time for her to ult. I despawn Dallin to get some cost back. As you can see, it flies over to there. The shield goes up. And look at Oleg. Like, the guy just does not care. He's he's not even scratched his HP. He's still got like 30-40% HP shield left. You see, it's a bit tight on my Regulus because his max HP is quite high. And you've got the remainder of the damage done to Gwendolyn. Elowin is doing pretty good because her health is not very high. So Gwendolyn's shield is basically almost entirely encompassing that. And now it's up to Elowin to heal everyone up. The Earthshake, this is the part I find the most difficult to survive. It's just so much radiating damage coming out. And I'm relying on keeping everyone around Gwendolyn alive. And there aren't many platforms. There's only two. So that's just Elowin and Gwendolyn. I don't have enough space there to really utilize many other healers. So this is the hardest part for me. So I pop the ult from Elowin fairly early. And then I pop the ult from Regulus. You see that first hit doing so much damage to Elowin. Ulting from Salazar to kill the first rolling boulder just to make things a bit easier on Oleg because it does do a lot of damage. And then Salazar dies, but that's okay. He's not really needed. The final Earthshake finishes. Everyone else is alive. So I have my core four heroes. The shield from Regulus helped to resist damage on his allies and increased his max HP. And now I can drop my Vierna down. Oleg took massive damage from the roll. He has no damage himself, so he, he does need Vierna to help him out here. And this part's pretty standard, it's quite smooth for me at this point. I'm kind of just waiting for the enemies to pile up. You can see the choppers are hitting quite hard. I time it so it just about clips the back row. I want to get it done fast and then I despawn Viona to get the cost back and to get her to respawn a little bit sooner. The Shriek is coming up. Again, you can see Gwendolyn needs to basic attack herself first. So I do need everyone to be max healed. This is kind of just hoping it goes that way. 
the shielding from Gwendolyn, the quick kill from Vienna, and Ulag's passive shielding make this a lot easier to do. So Elowin should just really be able to spam heal Regulus. And so we have the shield up. This goes up, plus 64k shield to everyone. And another Shriek lands. Oleg still doesn't care. Elowin is fine. And it's just these two that take a big hit. Now this time I don't have Vienna. She's on a 30 second cooldown. So I can throw down some fodder to just absorb some hits here. But the Earthshake is coming up. That's what makes this part quite tricky. Now I'm going to have the Earthshake stacking with the Rolling Boulder guys. So I need to heal everyone as well as defending against Rolling Boulders. So again, heal from Elowin as it gets closer to the end. Shield from Regulus. And I'm just prepared to keep chucking people down to block these boulders. And this is the block from Olag. Stops attacking, absorbs massive amounts of physical damage and also helps his allies resist it. Rolling Boulder dies because it was under 50% HP when it collided. I should probably have thrown Dallin down, but I guess he's fine. And on the right side, Abomination is doing a pretty good job of tanking there as well. Now we have a bunch more enemies coming and we still have 13 seconds on Vienna. In the past, I have tried to leave it without spawning just to wait for Vienna and it's just too much damage and my defenders die. You can see how much damage my Salazar is taking on the left side. So the ult goes out just so I can get rid of those couple adds at the front or one ad at the front. And on the right, Abomination falls. But now I have Vienna down, her ult is ready. Regulus is taking damage, but Vienna is able to protect him just in time. And at this point, I'll despawn Salazar because I want these to get close. A Shriek is coming right up. These guys need to be max HP. If you despawn Vienna too soon, the cull effect, the execute effect from Reaper's Grasp won't trigger. So I hesitated there because if I despawn her, they wouldn't die, which I screwed up in the past. So I hesitate. Soon as it dies, you have to wait. It dies, despawn, shield, because there's already a shield up on Gwendolyn, fortunately. And then everyone survives again. So it's pretty tight. And now we're onto the final wave of spawns. We have an Earthshake coming up and we have more enemies coming. The enemies will reach before the Earthshake lands in the previous round. In this round, I think the Earthshake lands first. So if I throw down weak defenders, they just die. So I have to time it a bit tighter. And this is, again, both ults popping on the defenders as well as Elowin's ult to keep everyone alive. And now I can try and time it to make sure that they absorb some of the hits on my weaker characters. So Dagna goes down, takes that hit. Dallin goes down, takes that hit. Enemies have now lost like 70% of their HP, so if they roll again, they're dead. Once again, though, I'm 30 seconds off Vienna, but now I'm also 25 seconds off of Salazar and a bunch of seconds off of my other heroes. So this is where it's the sketchiest for me. This was the hardest part for me to solve. So I dropped down the Wood Elf from Elowin over here just to keep Regulus up. Regulus was actually my weak point in this run. Volker goes down. She absorbs the roll. On the left side, I'm taking a massive amount of damage. On the right side, I'm doing okay because Volker's up. She hits three people at a time. Abomination goes down on the left. He gets one shot immediately, so it didn't work very well there. But Gwendolyn's ult's up. There's no more Shrieks coming, so I'm safe to use it. Volker cleaned up the right side. Salazar goes down on the left. And I can't really use Volker, so I'm just going to despawn her. There's a lot of passive damage that comes on the boss, and I don't want it to be wasted healing someone who's not doing anything. So I really should have despawned Regulus as well. Vianna goes down. She's going to get absolutely roasted, but it's a bit of extra damage to help deal with the adds. I try to ult, but she just dies anyway. But it's fine, because I have Salazar. And you can see his damage is just colossal, and he wipes the boss out. And that is how I beat Gear Raid 220. I will be trying the same on Gear Raid 221, but my <laughs> first hurdle I fell over because unfortunately Salazar can't tank the first enemy, the chopper just one hit kills him, Elowin can't heal through instant death, so that one's a bit tricky unfortunately, and uh, as usual I got crap rewards, but hey that's just the way it goes. But yeah, that is my run, that is how I cleared Gear Raid 220, here's the stat screen at the end, Salazar is represented heavily because he, wants, he basically deleted the boss by himself, but truly I think Viona was the star of that run, just being able to cull the enemy so quick, her ult coming up fast, and of course, Gwendolyn can't take anything away from her. Without her, that run would not work at all. And the defenders were very key as well. And Elowin. They basically had a really tight crew of heroes. There's a, a few ways of doing this. If you've got a really strong North team, you've got some of the faction leaders such as Isolde or King Haas. You can run more heroes. You can run Vortex and you can go for a shield heavy team. If you have Lily, you can exploit some strategies around that. I don't have Lily. I don't have any faction lords for the North team. So my strategy was just keep a really tight, solid core of heroes fodder fighters to absorb some of the hits and rely on Vienna's pure power to wipe out the rest but yeah that's it that's my run 
I hope it was informative. If you have any questions about how I did it, let me know. I'll show the stats of my characters at the end now. So thank you very much for watching. Good luck in your run and take care, guys. Bye-bye.